Hi, this is James from Bond with James. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about an Ionic Dice activity that I started doing back in 2008 when I came across this blank dice and label set from Learning Resources. However, technically you don't need to use this set of dice. You can use any material for your class that will allow you to engage your students in a hands-on activity in regard to naming Ionic compounds and actually writing formulas for Ionic compounds. The way this, I would do this in my class is depending on whether you were in an on-level regular class or a pre p class, you would either do six or 12. And students were responsible for rolling the dice, I would have a cation and anion version. And whatever you, the student rolled, they had to write the formula for it. And they also had to write the name for it. Now, technically, I would tell the students they either, they depending on the class, they either would do six or 12. They only had to do that number. So if they rolled, let's say for example, I was a student and I rolled this and I'm like, I don't know how to do that. I could technically roll again until there was something that I could do. However, I would always tell the students, well, you know, you do realize that you will be taking a quiz and when you take the quiz, that is what counts. And so, yes, you can roll the dice as many times as you want until you're able to get something where you can get credit for, but the quiz is worth more. And if you make less than a 70% on the quiz, I require you to come in and do it. So in this case, you know, I would have students, if they rolled the dice, I would always tell them, you know, write, write it down because that informs me on how I can help you. So there were actually a couple mistakes on this particular student because I don't even know where they got that six from because ammonia, ammonium, NH4, and this student wrote NH6, so I don't know where they got that from. But um, here they left number 10 and 12 blank, but here they wrote a formula for it. So to me, it's like, okay, well, what are you struggling with? And this particular student um, kind of was struggling all around because they were changing numbers they had the one half and so this for this particular student i'm going to have to have a, a little bit more one-on-one -on -one intervention like where are you getting these numbers from because they're not clearly on the dice um this student had a little bit more success and so i can kind of you know quickly do this and because they're rolling dice there's not there's not a hard answer key and so if you know you're not a chemistry person and you're teaching chemistry for the first time then I would suggest doing this as practice, perhaps maybe not as a grade, and then also doing this as you know a form for tutoring. If students were coming in for tutoring, having them roll the dice in front of you and then sort of talking about it. Whereas I don't really, I didn't really mind them rolling the dice and then me grading this really because I could do it really quickly. I can just look at what they had, and I can look at the formula and I can look at the name, and you know give them credit for whether they got it right or incorrect. That concludes my video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments. Or questions in the comment section of my blog or YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.